Hello everyone, Palitum here. Welcome back to the Sea of Thieves. We are still in the beta. The beta weekend was extended by two days. Today was going to be the last night, this is Sunday night that I'm recording this on. But we have a couple more days to jump in and see the sights of the game. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about some information that was data mined from the beta client. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that Reddit post because it's actually being expanded over time as well. A link to that will be down in the video description. The gameplay on the screen isn't really here for much. Just to have some nice stuff to look at in the background. Uh, but I will be going all over all of the information, telling you what I think, and uh, kind of breaking it down piece by piece. And uh, maybe giving some insights into why the developers are doing certain things later on. Now, of course, I don't work for Rare, but I have looked into this game quite a lot over the last few days. We've been playing it quite a bit. I've tried to learn as much as possible. That's usually how I approach new games that I'm interested in. But I've typically avoided data mining posts for every game that I cover, specifically because I feel like it kind of ruins the excitement of discovering it on your own. The reason I am approaching it differently for this particular game, for Sea of Thieves, is because there's been a lot of posts online that I've seen of people saying that this game has no substance, there's nothing to do, there's nothing to work for, and that the game feels empty. Now, of course, in the beta, we have 16 people in an instance. In the live server, we're going to have 100 people in an instance, or 99. And, of course, we only have one faction that we're actually doing missions for, for two types of varieties, either uncovering riddles or burying up or digging up buried treasure so the, of course those game mechanics will be extended also the map is going to get significantly larger and we're going to be talking about some of that in today's video as well so first things first we have chests that have been data mined some of them already in the game some of them not in the game just yet these chests are the chest of sorrow the common chest the drunken chest the legendary chest, the mythical chest, rare chests, and then shipwreck versions of some of these. Common chests, legendary chest, mythical chest, and rare chests. So as it's in the game right now, you pretty much find the same two treasures all over the place. But then if you're lucky, you'll get what's called a captain's chest, which is the one that has jewels on it. Or just under that, you can get a marauder's chest. And those are in the game right now. So those names that we see data mined may be the chests that are already currently in the game, just with a different internal title. And the chest of sorrow and the drunken chests are also in the game as well, but they're very uncommon and they both cause different effects. So the chest of sorrows is the one that will cry and flood your ship. So you have to kind of counterbalance. Do I want to take this thing on a long journey when it's making this long journey more difficult? Or do I want to go throw this in and uh, get my reward for it right away? It's kind of up to you as the player at that point. Uh, and the drunken chest, as you hold it, you become drunk, you stumble around, it becomes very, very hard to actually move that thing reliably over a long distance. So as far as chests, we're not seeing anything too new from the data mine, at least I think. Even the common chests and what was the other one? The legendary chest. I mean, we could assume that the common chest would be the seafarer's chest, right? The one we get in the game all the time. The next category on the data mining list is the companies. We have, of course, the Gold Hoarders, the Merchant Alliance, and the Order of Souls. We've talked about these companies in great detail in the past, or in some detail in the past, but the Gold Hoarders are the company that's in the game right now. They're focusing on getting treasure. They're focusing on you going out, getting chests, and coming back to them. But there is some other things that allow you to build reputation with the Gold Hoarders that we'll be talking about soon. It's a little bit further down the list here. Then you have the Merchant Alliance. They are going to be the company that sends you out to get supplies, things like explosive barrels, things like animals that you can track down on islands and put in crates and bring back. That's what you're going to be looking for, and really that's what they're all about. And then the Order of Souls is about killing mythical legendary pirates, gathering their souls of power, and bringing them back to the Order of Souls representative for rewards. 
As far as creatures we may be encountering for the Merchant Alliance or just out in the open world, you know, maybe some of these are enemies. Definitely some of these are enemies. Uh, we have bats, chickens, fish, parrots, pigs, seagulls, sharks, and snakes. So sharks we know are, of course, hostile. In fact, if we jumped into the water right here, after a while, we would likely see a shark very quickly that was coming after us in order to take our lives away from us. That's something in the game right now. That's something that's very common around shipwrecks. And if you played the beta, you're very familiar with sharks. But all of these other ones are brand new. And we're not too sure how they're going to interact in the game. I imagine most of the, the lesser wildlife, you know, maybe, maybe the fish, the pigs, the parrots, are going to be things that you capture in order to bring back to the Merchant Alliance. I like how the one time I want to see a shark in this game, he's just nowhere to be seen. Now, this is where it actually does start to be pretty interesting. We see that the, is that a shadow? Come on, where's the, sh there's one, there he is. We see some enemies that have been data mined from this post. One of those is the Kraken. There have been whispers about the Kraken being in the game already. We don't know if he actually is as far as I know. I have not seen any posts confirming that there is indeed a Kraken, but it turns out there will be one in the game and it appears to be the same Kraken from the concept art where the tentacles kind of reach up over the ship and pull you down into the water. It uh, looks pretty terrifying just from that. Then we are going to have mermaids. Now, this is the part that I'm confused. If we are, if we were to lose our ship or get too separated from our ship, a mermaid would spawn in order to take us back to our vessel. So if we just let that thing sail off, eventually we'll see a smoke beacon come up out of the water and they'll be like, hey, I see you need a little help. Why don't you swim over here and we'll, we'll get you back in the right direction. I don't know if these mermaids are also going to have like an evil variant where they are indeed trying to attack you or trying to take something from you. Ah, right here, signaling me over. There's a bit of a like a siren song channeling me this way as well as the smoke coming up out of the water as well. I hope my ship doesn't crash on that island dead ahead. But yeah, this is what mermaids are in the game right now. They're simply here to help you. You talk to them and they send you back to your ship or bring you a new ship if it happened to sink. The last one we have is the skeletons and I'm sure if you guys have played the beta, you're very familiar with skeletons. They're very non-threatening and I hope that's something that changes moving forward in the future. Uh, in fact, if we go over here, it's very likely that we can find one. They simply kind of stumble around. Their biggest strength is the fact that they have the numbers advantage. So if you buy, if you're by yourself, you may be in a little trouble. They may get you, but of course skeletons can't swim. So they end up just standing here. So I hope the AI for these guys does get improved quite a bit because as of right now, they, they simply aren't too threatening. In fact, that's probably my biggest takeaway from the beta is I wish there were more devastatingly difficult enemies and it wasn't just the, the difficulty of the game being focused on puzzle solving and PvP. I wish there was more of a PvE element, but that's just my opinion. I'm making a video talking about things I, I, I'm looking forward to maybe seeing in the game, and I'm gonna save most of that rhetoric for that. That's all we have for enemies. As far as food goes, the only food in the game right now is bananas. And we will see that expanded just a little bit. We are going to see the addition of, uh, let's see, bananas, coconuts, pomegranate and rum. Now I'm not sure how the storage of that is actually going to work because we have one set of barrels for bananas and that's all we have down here. So maybe we'll see just a general food. Maybe we'll see different barrels for each of the types. I'm not too sure at this point, but I think that's a great idea. I also wouldn't mind seeing fish or sharks be able to be like farmed up, cut down and used as food as well if you needed it in a pinch. But hey, that's just me again. We're not talking about that. We're talking about data mining here. Now, some map names have been uncovered. The Blue Sea of Plenty, the Sea of the Damned, the Wilds and the Wild Sea of Plunder. Now, these maps seem to be 
additional areas added into the game. I kind of want to go to the southeast corner just to see what's down there. Seem to be additional areas into the game. So I mentioned that the instance size is going to be expanding. Well, this current map, I've been told, I haven't actually done it, but I've been told, takes about half an hour with the wind behind you to sail from one side to the other. Reportedly in the full game, we're going to be seeing a five to six hour voyage. I believe that's the right metric. I believe, I believe that's what I heard. Uh, if that's not accurate, I do apologize. But a significantly larger map to explore, hence there being more players in the world as well. And it appears that the names of these areas are just simply going to be the regions of the map that we will encounter. So the Blue Sea of Plenty, the Wilds, the Wide Sea of Plunder, and then possibly the Sea of the Damned, which as of right now, we don't have any more information under or information for. We do have a list of NPCs that are going to be released as well. We have Bell, Blind Bob, the Bounty Dealer. Okay, I jumped to some conclusions here. The bounty dealer, does that insinuate that there's going to be a player bounty system possibly added into the game? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We have a clothing de dealer, generic shopkeeper. It's a nice name. The ghost captain, the gold hoarder, who of course we get missions from. The innkeeper, the innkeeper's hideout. The merchant, the nice mermaid, the order of souls, the pirate lord, the potion seller, the Shipwright, and the Weapon Dealer. We also have new riddles with certain stipulations, I believe, that need to be made. I believe that's what these are. So in order to solve some of these riddles that we'll be encountering on the full game's release, you might need to go to a specific bounty location. You may need to dig holes. You may need to look at your map. A non-vague, non-unique landmark, whatever that means. I'm assuming it's the paintings on the island that signify the sun or the kraken or a turtle that kind of are artwork just around the islands. Then we have play instrument and a raise lantern to also trigger the effects of the riddle. Now, the ship customization is confirmed for the release of the game by developers, but we are seeing some insights into what you will be able to customize. So for instance, the cannon, the capstan, which I believe is what you use to raise the anchor. I believe that's what that is. Uh, the livery, I have no idea what that is. The mast and the wheel. Those will be able to be modified. In what way, we don't really know. There's also going to be the addition of a harpoon gun, kind of insinuating that you will be able to hunt sharks or just creatures in the water in a new way. But out of all the creatures that we had listed, sharks were kind of the predominant one that stood out as like big game fishing. We are also seeing ship figureheads being added in so we can have something nice on the front of our ship. Kind of looks like I have a little shark up there right now. Just a little shark. What are you doing up there? What are you doing up there, little shark? And I do apologize for the alt tapping, guys. I am going down this list and just giving you my insights um, as we go along. But ship figureheads, we are going to have an anglerfish, a banjo, a dove, a dragon, jdark, whatever that is, a lion, mermaid, parrot, Poseidon, shark, skelly lantern, which presumably would be another light on your ship that may make you more easily seen by enemies. We're, we're not too sure. A skull head, a spinal, a squid, swordfish, unicorn, and my personal favorite, Zeus. I think that's really cool. Now, as far as the ship's cargo, we talked about this a little bit already. We already have the banana crate, the cannonball crate on this ship, which is up here. Uh, we have the wooden crate, which we used to get planks out of, and the ammunition crate. That's what we have right now. We are going to see a snake basket added, a pig container added, a chicken crate added, and I believe that is it. Oh, a gunpowder crate. Was that the same as this one? Is that what this one's called? It's called an ammo chest right now. So maybe you will be able to stash those large containers of gunpowder inside crates soon. 
A few shops were data mined as well. Those shops are clothing shops. Then we have Gold Hoarder Company Equipment. We have the Merchants Company Equipment. The Order of Skulls Company Equipment. Salty's Equipment Shop and Shady's Equipment Shop. And those seem to be NPCs of merit, but we haven't seen them unlocked under the data mine list. There's another ship up ahead of me here. I wonder what they're gonna do. Now, treasure artifacts were also uncovered, and these are the other ways that I kind of alluded to earlier that you might be able to actually gain some reputation with the gold hoarders without just bringing quests back to them. So these are boxes, goblets, impressive, whatever that means. I wonder if that's the player. No, that was too good of a shot to be the player. Uh, impressives and vases. So there are three variants of each of these as well. Maybe that was the player. I can't tell. Do you guys see a skeleton? I don't see anything shooting this cannon. No, that's definitely a player. <laughs> I'm just gonna, gonna hang out. Oh, now he's sinking me. All right, that just won't do. That just won't do. We're gonna have to take him out, boys. We're gonna have to take him out. His buddy's right over here. Does he see me? Oh yeah, they're both shooting at me now. Stand still, bud. He's dead. And... Where's his friend at? Where is he hiding? I like how this data mine video turned into PvP. I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm, I'm just so curious about the world. I have to. He probably shouldn't have left me up here. I think he went down to his ship to check on his friend. I wonder if I can get him down too. I think he's below deck. Hey bud. Go move. Oh, I missed by an inch. I missed by an inch. I'm coming on board. I don't think he knows where I am. I mean, if I'm coming on board, he'll figure it out pretty quick, right? I hit him right in the chest, but he got me. Ah! So these treasure chests have three variants. These treasure artifacts. The boxes have three. The goblet has four. The impressive, whatever that means, has three. And the vases have three as well. The vases have three. So these are just, I'm assuming, going to be different skins, but they also might be different numeric values that you get for turning these back in to the gold hoarders as well. And last but not least, we just showed off a little bit of the weapon play. There are going to be some more weapons added into the game when it is released. And this is what we've uncovered so far. I hope there's more added to this list as well. So the blunderbuss is one you actually have to buy from a merchant. It costs in the beta, I believe 960 gold, and it's effectively a shotgun. Does a ton of damage, very close range, but very devastating as well. We also have the cutlass in the beta. This was on the list. Uh, we have a flintlock pistol. That was in the beta as well. And the sniper rifle, which was in the beta. Uh, the, the sniper rifle, you just saw me use it against a player. Pretty accurate if you can dial in where the center is, uh, but does have the longest range out of all the weapons. Definitely a drop off at some point though. You definitely can't just shoot people across the map. Circa Battlefield 1942 or whatever that game was called. Now we are seeing some other weapons on this list here. We're gonna have a boarding ax, which I hope is used to be able to jump on a ship from other angles. Because as of right now, it can be a little difficult to get onto a ship. The only two direct ways are climbing ladders, which can be easily guarded by the enemy pirates. Another way is to use the cannon to point it straight up. Get yourself in the cannon and fire it off. And as you can imagine, this isn't the most accurate way to land on a ship and you actually don't have too much control over oh, your trajectory. And of course, there's fall damage associated with that as well. We are going to see a heavy sword. I'm assuming this will require two hands in order to wield. 
a rapier, which might be able to parry attacks away from enemy players, if I had to speculate, and also just a generic pistol, not a flintlock pistol like we have in the game right now, but a pistol. So, I mean, are we gonna pull out a Glock? I'm not too sure. I guess we'll have to wait and find out. But I know there wasn't a lot of visual aids in this in this uh, footage, guys. I do apologize about that. And like I said, I don't normally do these data mine videos. I don't even read data mine content usually. I like to sit down and be surprised. But there were so many concerns from people who have not played the game and some people who played the game maybe without a microphone, maybe by themselves. You know, maybe just people who played the game with friends and thought it felt empty. I guess I was kind of presuming. Let's, let's be... Uh, Let's be uh, um, all inclusive here. Some people, this game will not be for them, and that's okay. But a lot of people were saying that the game felt empty, felt like there wasn't anything to do. And we're starting to see a little bit more of the game unfold with this data mining coverage. And considering how tight-lipped the developers have been about what is actually going to be in the final release of the game, other than what they've shown off in trailers and such like that, I thought I might as well take some time out of my day read these to you guys, speculate with you guys, and hear what you guys have to say down in the comments. Are you excited about the new content? Have you been enjoying my content for Sea of Thieves? Let me know down in the comments. Um, I have to say, I'm, I'm so incredibly optimistic about this game. I think it really is going to be one to remember. And I hope, I hope that I'm not wrong. This is one time I would really not like to be proven wrong. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.